verse 14. He says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Psalm 32, verse 8 and 9. He said, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. The Lord bless his word. Speaking on divine leading and guidance. Divine leading and guidance. Our objective tonight will be to understand the value of divine leading and guidance. Number one, understanding the value of divine leading and guidance. Number two, we shall be understanding the modalities for divine leading and guidance. Or rather, understanding avenues of divine leading and guidance. What are the ways in which God chooses to lead people? Number three, we will understand requirements for divine leading and guidance. So, understanding the value of divine leading and guidance, one, understanding the avenues for divine leading and guidance, two, and then understanding the requirements for divine leading and guidance. I want to start by saying one of the most important things that can happen to anybody is, connect, is connection to the leading or guidance of God. Connection to the leading or the guidance of God. And I want you to take note of these three things by way of introduction. First, we live in a world of voices. We live in a world of voices. There are many voices in the world. First Corinthians chapter 14 verse 10 said that. There are many voices in the world. He said there are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world. So we live in the world of voices. Demonic voices. The voice of friends. The voice of enemies. The voice of those who love us. The voice of those who hate us. The voice of God. And so forth. We live in a world of voices. Second. Different voices come with different impact. Different voices carry different impact. Every voice has its impact. That was what 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 10 said. He said there is not one of those voices without signification. That is not one of those voices leave you just like that. They come with their impact. They come with their influence. Thirdly, the voice you listen to consistently affects your outcome. Both in this life and in the life to come. The voice you listen to consistently affects your outcome. Both in this life and in the life to come. Eve listened to the serpent. 
That one wasn't even consistent, just once. And humanity is yet to recover from the impact of Eve listening to the serpent. Samson listening to Delilah. You know, in my message book, I wanted to write Delilah I wrote disaster. I said something listening to disaster. But I had to cancel and write it back Delilah. Something listening to Delilah and that occasioned his disaster and premature death. That is reiterating the point that the voice you listen to determines your outcome. Ammon, the son of David, listened to Jonadab, a bad boy. Listening to that voice made him to commit an abomination. Sleeping with Tamar, his half-sister or stepsister, stepsister, that led to his premature death. The voice you listen to affects your outcome. Who have you given your ear to? Now, listen to this. It is important to now know the reason why we must listen to the voice of God. Because even people who don't mean any harm at times can give you a counsel that will be destructive. Not willingly. Not that they want to destroy you. Sarah counseled Abraham to go into his handmaid, Hagar, that counsel brought forth Ishmael. And you know the rest of the story. A man should listen his, to his wife under normal circumstances. But if that voice that came wasn't a voice that came from God, then that could produce the Abraham kind of result. Ahab listened to Jezebel and misruled Israel. In 1 Kings chapter 21 verse 25, the Bible is speaking about Ahab and Jezebel. It said, but there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to walk wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stared up. Jezebel kept staring him up with war. And this man mislived and misruled. The voice you listen to affects your outcome in this life. Let me summarize this generally onto five things. The impact of the voice on the life of a person. Number one, who you give your ears to, number one, affects your mindset set and thought pattern who you give your ears to affects your mindset affects your thought pattern and as he thinketh in his heart so is he who you give your ear to affects your mindset affects your thought pattern affects the way you think the things that go through your mind if you give your ear to a criminal criminal thoughts will flow through your mind Number two, who you give your ears to affects your choices and decision making. The things you choose, the decisions you make are affected by who you give your ear to. Who you give your ear to affects your choices and decision making. Thirdly, who you give your ear to Affects your emotion and feeling. Your emotion, feeling, psychological makeup can be affected. When you give your ear to somebody, for example, who is talking down on your life all the time, the outcome is that you feel low, you feel emotionally down. There are those, by the time they finish talking to you, there's no happiness left. They came to tell you all the worries in this world. Who you give your ear to affects your emotion, your feeling, your psychological makeup. Fourthly, 
who you give your ears to affects your lifestyle and action steps. How you live, the steps you take. Finally, who you give your ears to affects your life's outcome. That was what we have just said. This is summarizing all of it. Affects your life's outcome. Affects your life's outcome. Affects your life's outcome. Generally. And if it was God you gave your ear to, phew, congratulations. If it was the devil, disaster. If it was a bad person, disaster. Please, before I leave here, let nobody say I have said you shouldn't listen to your wife. Or listening to a, a good friend. The Bible said in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. The only occasion where you will not listen to anybody at all is when their counsel is contrary to the counsel of God, is contrary to the word of God, is contrary to the plan or the will of God. That is the only time where you have the right not to listen to whoever it was. Hallelujah. Having said all of that, what is the value of listening to God? What is the value of divine leading and guidance? What is the value? Number one is a fulfilling life. A fulfilling life and destiny. When you listen to God, you will be able to live a fulfilled life. What do I mean by that? Because the most important choices you, are, you, you, you will have to make in life are choices that will require God to assist to have a fulfilled life. For example, the choice of who to marry. Marital choices. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 22 said he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor from the Lord. So to find a good wife takes favor from God. It takes God to help you find a good wife. So the most important decisions of life that contribute to your welfare and fulfillment are decisions that will require God. What of career decisions? Marital decisions, career decisions. He told Jeremiah, I said, before I formed you, I knew you. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Before you came from your mother's womb, I separated you. Career decisions. What to do with your life. Yes, it is true. You are meant to be a medical doctor. What field? You are, you are a lawyer. Which, how? Which direction? What business? Career decisions. And of course, locational decisions. Decisions of where to live. Whether it is a state or a nation or a part of the world. These are decisions that will require God to assist. Psalm 37 verse 4. He said, delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6. He said, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. If he wants you to live in America, he will, he will assist you, show you, guide you, show you the way. He wants you to live in, in, in the UK, he will show you, guide you. He wants you to live in Nigeria, he will assist you. He will guide you. You see? This, so, I mean, you, will ha you, ca you can have a fulfilled life with a fulfilled wife. Or with, the, or with your God-ordained wife or husband, a fulfilled career. But imagine this. You are married to the wrong wife. Married to the wrong person. Living in the wrong country. Doing the wrong job. What a life. What a life. Marriage was a mistake. Career was a mistake. Place to live, a mistake. That will never be your portion. That is why we need the leading of God. The guidance of God for a fulfilling life and destiny. Number two, 
the fulfillment of life's purpose. That is reason for living as a whole. For the fulfillment of life's purpose and vision, possibly. Why you are alive to fulfill it. It's critical for God to guide. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 where we read, he said, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet to the nations before you, I formed you. I planned for you. I prepared for you. I organized what you should do with your life before you came. So in order for you to fulfill your life's purpose, consult me. In Acts chapter 26 verse 6, 12, 26, 12, Paul the apostle was giving the account of his call. He said, whereupon as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests. At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and, and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all falling to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. And I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. To make thee a minister and a witness both of, the, of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. Delivering you from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins. And inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. He said, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Here, here was Paul being given the full detail of his life assignment. And he, that couldn't have happened without divine guidance. What is the value of divine leading and guidance? The fulfillment of a fulfilling life and destiny and the fulfillment of life's purpose. Number three is supernatural supply or divine provision. That is God linking you what is yours. Linking you with what is yours. Without the normal regular struggle of life. In Psalm 23 verse 1 to 2 he said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He leads me. Beside the still waters, he leads me. He maketh me to lie down. He leads me. For as long as he is the one leading, I don't need to struggle for pasture. I don't need to struggle for what to drink and what to eat. If he is leading me. In 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 2 to 6, Bible speaking, he said, and the word of the Lord came unto me saying, unto Elijah saying, get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide yourself by the brook cherry that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord for he went and dwelt by the brook cherry that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening and he drank of the brook. Can you see that? God knew where his supply was and God directed him to the right brook where the raven will meet him. God knows the location for your connection. He knows the location for your allocation. He knows the position for your provision. That is why it, his direction is very important. He knows it. He sent Peter to the, to the, to the, to the, to the, to the lake. In Matthew chapter 17 verse 27. When the tax collectors came upon him and Jesus. He said notwithstanding. Go, sorry to the sea. Go to the sea. Cast a hook. The first fish that cometh up. When thou hast opened his mouth. You shall take a, find a piece of money. Take that. Give them for me and for thee. Hallelujah. This is supernatural supply or divine provision. There are people who are struggling unnecessarily in life who don't need no struggle. I'm not talking of working hard. I'm talking of unnecessary struggles that God can link you with where what is yours is. 
where you can put in regular effort and see unusual results. It can guide you. The business that has your money, the career that has your supply, that supernatural supply or divine provision by divine leading and guidance. Number four is supernatural power and authority. The voice of God comes with power. In Psalm 29 and in verse 4, he said, the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord. When God speaks to you, power rushes into you. There is a boldness that is packed off by the voice of the Lord. When God spoke to Moses in Exodus chapter 3, you, you can read the whole thing from verse 1 all the way to verse 10. Moses encountered God. And this same Moses that was on the run from Pharaoh, on the run from Egypt, having heard God, returned with force, returned with fire, returned with audacity and authority to confront the one that was looking for him. Where the voice of God is not heard, cowardice is inevitable, timidity, weakness. But when you are connected to what God is saying and connected to his guidance and his direction, you can face the future without fear. If, for example, it was God who guided you into your job or guided you to the country you are living now or directed you into the marriage you are in, you can face any devil that comes in there. Supernatural power. A lot of the reasons why there is a lot of timidity and lack of boldness in many is because they are, there is not, they are not in touch with God for any reason. Supernatural power and authority. Number six is victory over enemy forces. And that is both afflictions and battles. Enemy forces. Afflictions and battles. Both afflictions and battles. Whether it is the force of affliction or the force of enemy gang up or conspiracy. The voice of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 31. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 31. The scripture said. He said for through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down which smote with a rod. For through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down which smote with a rod. Through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down which smote with a rod. The voice of the Lord. Whatever was beaten, you can be beaten by his voice. Through the voice of the Lord. I realize that revelation is cure for affliction. Now, in 1 Samuel chapter 30, David had a raid, a confrontation from the Amalekites. And in verse 8, the Bible said, all right, let me start from verse 5. From verse 3. David and his men came, to, okay, let's start from verse 1 just for a better understanding. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burnt it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burnt with fire and their wives and their sons and their Daughters were taking captives. Go to verse 6. All right, verse 4. Then, then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And, and David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because of the soul of all the people were grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Verse 8. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And, and he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Pursue. And he pursued. And in verse 19, 
David recovered all. There was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all by the voice of the Lord. By the voice of the Lord. 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 17 to 21. For the sake of time, I won't go into this detail now, but you can write down the scripture. 2 Samuel chapter 24. Verse 17 to 21. Can you? First Samuel 24. Let, let me see that. All right. Uh, I, I'll get that scripture. Second Samuel chapter 5. Let me see that. 5.17. But when the Philistines, now 2 Samuel 5, 17 to 21, and then 22 to 25. But when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines came to seek David. And David heard of it. And went down to the hole. The, the Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephim. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said unto David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. And David came to Baal Perazim, and David smote them there, and said, The Lord has broken forth upon mine enemies before me as the breach of the waters. Therefore he called the name of that place Baal Perazim. And there they left their images and David and his men burned them. Now listen to this. What do I do, Lord? God said, go and smite them. He went and smote them. Now they came again. Verse 22. Let's read that now. They came again. And the Philistines came up yet again. So the enemy will try to come again and again. And spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, Thou shalt not go up, but fetch a compass behind them. Don't do like before. And come upon them over against the mulberry trees. And let it be when thou hearest the sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees. That then thou shalt bestir thyself. For then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. Look at that. If David had followed past experience, it would have ended in disaster. But divine guidance gave him victory over enemy forces. There are many people today who are victims of battles only because they don't know what God is saying and what they should do. But that will not be your story after today. In the name of Jesus, what is the value number six? Escape from danger and disaster. The voice of God, God's leading and guidance makes you escape danger. It's not battle yet. It's not affliction. There is danger, there is disaster ahead. You escaped it. You dodged. In Proverbs chapter 22 verse 3, Proverbs 22 and in verse 3, he said a prudent man or a sensitive person foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. But the simple, the ignorant continues going and is punished. A prudent man, a sensitive man Sees the evil ahead. He senses it and hides himself. But the simple pass on and they are punished. In 1 Samuel chapter 23, verse 7 to verse 13. All right. Just take it all the way from verse 1 to verse 13. All the way. It was told to David that the Philistines came to fight Keila. Please let me explain it because of time. And David decided to go and fight the Philistines against Keilah and deliver the land. Then, after David delivered the land and he lived among the people he just delivered, suddenly he heard that Saul was coming to meet him there. He prayed and said, Lord, now this man did not assume that these people I just delivered will help me. Lord, will Saul come to Keilah? God said, Yes. Lord, will the people of Keilah deliver me into his hands? God said, yes. He advised himself and ran. Will they, is he coming? Yes. 
Will they deliver me into his hands? Yes. You know, assumption brings destruction any day. If he had assumed, he would have been gone. The voice of the Lord. That next danger and disaster organized for you by the devil will never catch you. In the name of Jesus Christ. That was number six. Number seven. Now, what have we said so far? What is the value of the voice of God? Number one, it gives you a fulfilling life and destiny. Number two, it helps you to fulfill your life's purpose while you are born. Number three, supernatural supply or divine provision can be assessed by you by divine direction. Number four, is supernatural power and authority. Number five, is victory over enemy forces and that is afflictions and battles. And number six, escape from danger and disaster. Through divine guidance and leading, you escaped, you entered the vehicle, you came down. Well, you are, I mean, you just escaped. You escaped the wrong marriage. You escaped. Escape from danger and disaster. Number seven is the impartation of wisdom. The impartation of divine wisdom. The voice of God makes somebody wise. When God guides you, you can't be a fool. Uh, you cannot be connected to the voice of the only wise God. And be a fool. You know, children that grow up with elders are very wise. I mean, if someone's literal wise grandfather or grandmother brought them up, when they talk, you shake because of the wisdom with which they are talking. How much more the ancient of days? Connected to his wisdom. In Proverbs chapter 1 and in verse 5, the Bible says, a wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. A, a wise man will hear. In Micah chapter, chapter 6, so what you hear determines your wisdom. What you hear and who you are hearing from determines how wise you will be. If you are hearing from God, your wisdom is not contestable. Micah chapter 6 and in verse 9. Micah chapter 6 and in verse 9, he said, The Lord's voice crieth unto the city, and the man of wisdom shall see thy name. Hear ye the rod, and who has appointed it? The word is the same as the rod. Those who hear it are wise. Those who hear his word and hear his voice, they dwell in wisdom. Very, very important. And you need wisdom to deal well in the affairs of life. To deal successfully and prosperously in the affairs of life. The impartation of divine wisdom was number seven. And number eight is existence in peace and tranquility. The peace we talked about last Sunday. One of the secrets of peace is the voice of God. I'm sure you remember that. Psalm 23 verse 1 to 2 said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. That is talking about peace, not troubled waters. If God leads you, he leads you in the way of peace. Psalm 85 verse 8. I will hear what the Lord, what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace. He will speak peace. Hallelujah. When you are living a life that is always permanently under tension, most times you are disconnected with what God is saying. You are not current with heaven. So you are troubled and worried about everything. Beloved, the voice of God, the leading of God, the direction of God is worth more than any money, any house, anything that anybody can give you under heaven. What are the avenues? For divine leading and guidance. I'm rushing because of time. Number one is through the word. Through the word. God speaks through the word. The word. First Samuel chapter 3 verse 21. The Bible said, The Lord appeared again in Shiloh. For the, word, the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh. By the word of the Lord. God shows himself through his word. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 to 2. He said God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. He has in these last days spoken to us by his son. Whom he has appointed heir of all things. By whom also he made the worlds. And who is that son? In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. The word of God is the same as the son of God. According to scripture. 
In Psalm 29 verse 3, it said that the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. What is the water? The word. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26, that he may sanctify and cleanse the church with the washing of water by the word. See, the voice of God is upon the water means the voice of God is on top of the word. That is inside the verse. There is the voice. Inside the written word, there is a spoken word inside it. Very important. And the surest, the surest word you can receive is that which jumped out of scripture. That when you can stand on it, you can stake your life on it. Very, very important. Through the word. Number two is through the witness of the spirit. The witness of the spirit. Romans chapter 8 verse 13 said. As many, for as many as are led by the spirit. Verse 14. For as many as are led by the spirit of God. They are the sons of God. Look at verse 16. For the spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. That's that witness. Through the witness of the spirit. What is that witness? It is called a knowing. I may not have the time to go through that alone because that is a teaching of his own. The major bulk of what Jesus did in the New Testament, if you read it, and Jesus knowing in himself, and Jesus knowing in himself, and Jesus knowing in himself, is a knowing. The way you got born again, and you knew without a doubt that you have peace with God now, that witness of the Spirit can come in other areas of your life. Other areas. The witness of the Spirit. The witness of the spirit is also coming in form of that peace of God that passes understanding. Where you are about to make a decision, you lost your peace. That is the witness of the spirit telling you, don't, don't move. You have, you, or, you, or, or, you, or you thought of it, peace was full. The witness of the spirit is a, 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 an avenue of the leading and the guidance of God. Number three is through the voice of the spirit. This is beyond just a witness. This is a hearing. This is a hearing. This hearing can be inward and it can be outward. The hearing can be inward which means that nobody around you hears it. In fact, if you yourself, you are not careful, you would have missed it. The Bible called it the still small voice in the Old Testament. In 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 12. This, after that, earthquake and fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. If you give me the Living Bible version and the, maybe the, the Living Bible or the New Living Translation and maybe NIV or something, they, they, he said, and then there was the sound of a gentle whisper. That's how the voice sounds at times, like a gentle whisper. A gentle whisper again. So gentle, if you are not careful, you miss it. Let, 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 me, let me give you another modality of this voice. In Romans chapter 10 verse 19, after Paul saw a vision, Acts 10 19, Paul saw a vision. Peter, sorry, saw a vision. He couldn't understand the vision. But, said, but as Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. This is the voice that flows in, inside the thought. In the midst of godly anointed thinking. In the midst of, it just flowed in. A, you are not careful, you thought it was a thought. Except that it is different from your train of thought at that time. Except that it is forceful. Except that it came, came with the peace. Except that it carried the presence. That is the voice of the spirit. It could be outward. In which case you, you look around as if you heard, as if, every, as, if you, as if somebody else heard what you are hearing. That was the kind of audible voice that Samuel heard when Saul 
Samuel heard when he was with his father in the Lord, the prophet Eli. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 9, he was hearing a sound. And he ran to Eli. Ah, are you calling me, sir? He said, I'm not calling you. It was audible. Very, very audible. So this voice could be inward and it could be external. But when it comes to the leading of the spirit, how it came is not the issue. It is where it came from that matters. Somebody may see a clear, vivid vision and somebody else, all he heard was an inward witness. None weighs heavier. None. Once the source is the same, the channel means nothing. So it is the, the, the word, the witness of the spirit, the voice of the spirit. Number three is true vis dreams. Okay. True revelations, dreams, and visions. Let me just, let me simplify it and make it just dreams, visions, trances. That category is called revelation altogether. Visions, dreams, trances. In, Jer in Job chapter 33, verse 14 to verse 18, Job 33, verse 14 to verse 18, he said, For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men. And sealed their instruction that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man to keep his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. You see that? That, that it's all right now. That same, that, this same passage is, is, is identifying to us further that hearing God delivers people from danger in dreams, in visions, in trances. In Joel chapter 2, verse 28, the Bible said. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. So we are, we are seeing visions. We are seeing dreams. We are seeing prophecies. Daniel chapter 2 verse 19. Then he said, then was the secret revealed to Daniel in a night vision. See, so God speaks through visions, dreams, revelations. The King Nebuchadnezzar had dreams of things to come at the end. Pharaoh had dreams of what was to happen in his country 14 years ahead. Joseph had dreams of his future. Dreams. I've encountered God in a couple of the ways I'm mentioning here. It was in a revelation in the night where I saw the property on the, on the, on the, of, the, of the Lord's garden by the airport road many, 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 10 to 12 to 15 years before it materialized in the physical. Very important. I, I, I may not have the time to go into the detail of all of this, but what is the difference? Now, dream, vision, trance. Dream happens when you are fully asleep. And the dream can happen in the day or the night. There are prophetic revelation and, and dream have, the dreams can come from many sources. Dreams can come from you if you think about a sister or a brother for a long time, you, you like to marry them, you would dream that you are getting wedded with a person. It, it came from you. Dreams can come from the devil. In that case, they are very evil, very demonic, very scary, very, very tormenting. And dreams can come from God. They carry instruction. They carry insight. They carry a message most times from God. God is saying something. So dreams can happen in the day or in the night because if you sleep in the day and you dreamt, that was a dream. You slept in the night and you dreamt, that was a dream. The second is vision. Vision is you are awake and then you are seeing a picture. The picture could be stationary like a still picture or it could be motion picture like a video. Whichever way it comes, it's vision. The vision can also be in the night. If you are awake in the night and you are not sleeping and, and you saw something, that was a vision, not a dream. Daniel had a night vision, which means he saw the vision in the night. That's vision of the night. So that's vision. 
What about trance? The trance is like the average between a dream and a vision. Where you are not asleep and you are not awake. It's like your physical senses are suspended. Half awake, half asleep. And then you saw something. Most times when you have prayed and you got very exhausted. You are still praying but it appears like you dozed off a bit. But it wasn't a doze. In that junction, that sleep awake junction. Awake or sleep junction. At that junction, it is possible to see something. That is a trance. And God can speak. Peter saw a trance. Where he saw uh, the, the, the gospel door opening to the Gentiles. That is a trance. God can speak true. Now, the reason why this is very interesting is because anything we preach about, God confirms. And so I, I see people who are going to have an explosion of revelations. People with revelation gifts before. People who are hearing the voice of God or receiving direction from God in areas of your life and you are not seeing or hearing anything now. From this moment, the door opens. In the name of Jesus Christ. So we have true visions, dreams, and revelations. Number th five is true situations and circumstances. True, let me call it, ordained situations and circumstances. I'm not talking of negative situations. Ordained situations and circumstances. That is God using the universe for a university. Using life to teach. We spoke about that yesterday. In Proverbs chapter 24, verse 30 to verse 34. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 30 to verse 34. He said, I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard. Of the man that is void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns. And nestles had covered the face thereof. And the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep. A little slumber. A little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come. You see that? I saw. I looked well. Back up a little bit. I looked. I looked. I saw and considered. Well. I looked and received instruction. What instruction? Divine instruction. Supernatural inspiration. He was looking at an environment and hearing instruction. He heard it. He received it. The situation was speaking to him. So God will use diverse situations to speak to people. Except that like as Job said, God speaketh once or twice, men perceived it not. He's speaking all the time. And then Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 1 to 6, Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 1 to 6, he said, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was mad in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, O house of Israel. You see, God said, go to the potter's house. And I will cause you to hear my word. Can you place it again? Go to the potter's house. Go to the potter's house. Go to the potter's house and there I will cause you to hear my words. There is something I want to tell you about but I can't tell you now until you are seeing the potter. Until you are seeing the process of pottery. Uh, they, 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 something he is doing will cause you to hear a message. You see, the circumstances of life all the time bring us diverse messages. Everything around is speaking. Your child's behavior spoke something. Your, your, everything is just speaking, but people are not hearing. That is, true circumstances, ordained circumstances and situations. And, and number six, true prophetic utterances and confirmations. I like, I like you to to look at the word I use, prophetic utterances and confirmations. And I deliberately put this one last. Hosea chapter 12 verse 10. Hosea chapter 12 verse 10 he said, I have also spoken by the prophets and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Now, while you sat in church, your prophet is speaking, you can receive direction. 
there are people who are testifying many times and they said, I said something and I can't remember saying it. The other day, someone said that I said under 24 hours, somebody who was in coma, somebody who had oxygen on his nose, doctors had given up, that I said he will be out of that place in 72 hours. They heard it, not one person, one, two or three of them heard that I said that. I can't remember ever saying that. And the man was out on that, on that 72. By that 72 hours on the dot, he was out. Someone said that, that somebody who was in the teaching hospital in Guagalada here that I said uh, in five days, he was already literally gone, that I said in five days he will come, he will, he will be awake from deep coma that was quarter to death. And he came out in five days. I can't remember ever saying that. If anybody is under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God can make you hear things out of their mouth. At times, even things they are not conscious of saying or they may not even have said at all. That's true. Now listen to this. However, the worst thing that can happen to anybody is to make themselves live at the mercy of prophecy. That is handing over your life to a so-called prophet to guide you. It's a miserable life. That is the error of the man because he's a human being and human beings are prone to error. As accurate as the prophet Samuel was, he missed it once or twice. And you leave the whole of your destiny into the hand of a man to guide that. Hello, um, I'm about to start this business. Is it correct? Hello, I'm about to travel on this journey. Should I go? That is not scripture. That's not how God ordained life to be. You have the spirit of God in you basically you have the witness of the spirit basically. If the prophet most times will say something that is especially directional things, marital things, accommodation things, or career issues, and all, these are things that should come more like confirmations of what you were perceiving. It came like to assist you make the decision that you were already planning to make. That's very critical for people to learn. I have seen people ruined by prophecies. Destroyed by so-called prophecies and prophets. Don't do that. People have been, marriages have scattered because the prophets say, no, the wife is a witch or the husband is this or sack your wife or sack your husband or he's the evil behind your life. Those kind of terrible things. But when the prophetic is confirmatory and is exhortatory and edification and came to assist you profitably and positively, it is possible that that is a guiding way. I was on the phone some, some time with somebody. It's a prophet, not a fake one, genuine. But he was saying something that was not correct. He was saying something that was not correct. I said, that is not correct. He said it again. I said, that is not correct. He repeated it. I off the phone. I am not under the obligation of hearing a prophetic word that is not right. That is not correct. And words carry spirits. Would, would, wouldn't let them land. Am I communicating? Don't respect anybody enough to agree to receive a prophecy that does not agree with your spirit. Don't respect anybody enough. <laughs> Somebody was in a service in a, a church one day. And the, the person called the, the pastor called him out and said, I see you going backward. He said, No, sir. I see you walking backward. He said, No, sir, not no, sir. And then he just took off from that church and then left permanently. I'm not, I'm not going backward. I refuse to go backward. <laughs> this is true prophetic utterances and confirmations, was number six. And number seven. Through diverse means, as deemed fit by God, it will be difficult to confine God to just one, a few means of direction. Through diverse means. It's, it, it, where we read in Hosea chapter 12 verse 10, it talks about multiplied visions, similitudes. That is diverse kind of, diverse ways, manners, 
parabolic ways, proverbs, divers. And I pray that whichever way God will lead you will be clear to you and he will speak to you in the language that you will understand. Somebody say amen. Hosea chapter 12 verse 10 is reference for that. My time is almost up. Can I stop here? Because I still have um, um, requirements for requirements. <laughs> Dr. Mr. Ninja said, where are we going? We are on lockdown. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, so what are the means we have just talked about through the word? Number two, through the witness of the spirit. Through the witness of the spirit, I'm sure that word is complete. Through the witness, number two. Through the witness of the spirit, number three. Through the voice of the spirit, number four. Through dreams, visions, trances, number five. Through ordained situations and circumstances, number six. Through prophetic utterances and confirmations, and number seven. Through diverse means as deemed fit by God. Now, what are the requirements for divine leading and direction. This is where the matter lies. By the time I said for myself, I have two more minutes, three more minutes, but I'm going to be as fast as I can. What do I do to be led of God? Who are the kind of people that God will lead gladly? What do you do? What, are you, what, what kind of mood are you required to be? Who should you be? What should you do to be led and guided by God effortlessly? I preach this because I have been a candidate of leadings. Leading into marriage. Leading into ministry. Leading into even ministry assignments. Very important. Number one, delight in the Lord. Delight in the Lord. Requirement number one, delight in the Lord. A man, a woman must be a lover of God to be led by God. Psalm 37 verse 4, he said, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he shall put things in your heart that you will desire. Psalm 25 verse 12. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach the way he shall choose. Go on. His soul shall dwell at ease and his seed shall inherit the earth. Verse 14. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. Them that reverence him and he will show them his covenant. He will show them his covenant. Delight. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. As it is written, eyes have not seen, ear have not heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. Lovers of God are entitled to revelations from God. He reveals to you. He shows you things. When you love the things of this world more than God, you love sports, entertainment, and all these things more than God, fashion, and all the fleeting things that pass away, it's not possible to be accurate in receiving and receiving direction and guidance from God. I am not under obligation to reveal, my, to reveal secrets to somebody who doesn't care about me as a human being. My wife knows so much about my life and destiny and assignment and prayer and everything because of the obvious reason. Delight in the Lord. Number two is passion for his will. Where you are passionate for the will of God. I am not struggling for my own will, Lord. What you want is what I want. Let me want what you want. Oh my dear Lord. Let me love what you love. Oh dear Lord, that is how you designed life to be loved. That is how 
Help me, Lord, to live how I ought to live. Passion for his will. 